This lesson is on L'Hopital's rule and how it is used with limits. You already have used L'Hopital's rule in a way because you have decided whether limits are indeterminate or not. And this is the list of limits that you had, and these are the answers. The first one is equal to 0 over 0, and when you got the limit for this, you got the answer of 1. That's an indeterminate form, 0 over 0. The second one is equal to infinity times 0. That, too, is an indeterminate form, and you got an answer of 1 or should have gotten an answer of 1. The third one is infinity over infinity, again an indeterminate form, and your answer should have been 3 over 1 or 3. The next one is infinity minus infinity, another indeterminate form, and once you got your answer on your calculator, you should have gotten it equal to 1 half. The next one is 0 to the 0. On your calculator, you should have gotten the answer of 1. On the next one, which should be very familiar to you, you have 1 to the infinity, and your answer should have been e. If you got 2.7, etc., etc., it really is e. The next one is 0 to the 0, and your answer on your calculator should have been 1. And the final one, in determinate form, infinity to the 0, and your final answer on your calculator should have been 1. All of these are your indeterminate forms, whether it be 0 over 0, 0 times infinity, infinity minus infinity, all are indeterminate form, and allows you to do this wonderful rule called L'Hopital's rule. What is L'Hopital's rule? It is stated as, suppose that f of x and g of x are differential on the interval containing c and g prime of c cannot equal 0. So then, if we have the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x, we can evaluate that limit by taking the primes of each. So we can take it as the limit as x approaches c of f prime of x over g prime of x. Before we get into examples of this, let me show you a short proof on one type of the indeterminate form. This is from problem number one, that type there, it's 0 over 0. So if we have f prime of c over g prime of c is equal to, and that limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c is nothing more than the definition of the derivative of f prime of c. And then the denominator the same way, g prime of c is equal to the limit as x approaches c of g of x minus g of c over x minus c. And the first thing you can see is these x minus c's will cross out. So then, that will be equal to the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c over g of x minus g of c. But we also said this is a 0 over a 0 type. So f of c and g of c are now 0, so that the limit as x approaches c now becomes just f of x over g of x. So we kind of proved it backwards, that the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x is equal to f prime of c over g prime of c. We went backwards in our proof. And we could prove all the rest, but this is just a little taste of a simple proof on one of these. Now the next thing we want to do is show how we use L'Hopital's rule to solve all the different types of indeterminate forms we have. So let's go to our first example, and that would be example one, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. We've already stated that it is a 0 over 0 type, so it's indeterminate. So we can use L'Hopital's rule, which means we just take the limit as x approaches 0, take the derivative of sine, which is cosine, take the derivative of x, which is 1, evaluate this, and we get cosine of 0 over 1, cosine of 0 is 1, so the answer is 1, which you got on your calculator. Let's go to example 2. The limit as x approaches infinity of x sine 1 over x. 
This one is the zero times infinity. In order to use L'Hopital's rule, we need to make this into a fraction. And the way we do that is to put that x in a denominator. So we have the sine of 1 over x over, put this in the denominator, it becomes 1 over x. Now we can use L'Hopital's rule. So that's equal to the limit as x approaches infinity. The derivative of sine is cosine, 1 over x. Using chain rule, derivative of 1 over x becomes negative 1 over x squared. And the same with that denominator, negative 1 over x squared. Very nicely, these cross out. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of cosine 1 over a very large number, which is almost 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So that is the second one done. Let's go on to the third one, example 3. Remember, that was infinity over infinity. Limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared over square root of 5 plus x to the fourth. Now, you can use L'Hopital's rule on this, but I always suggest that if you're going to infinity with infinity over infinity, as this one is, see if you can evaluate it without going through derivatives. And this one is able to be evaluated. Remember, when we do these, we look at the limit as x approaches infinity. We have the 3x squared, but in the denominator, remember, when we're going towards infinity, the 5 is almost meaningless. So we really have the square root of x to the fourth, which is x squared. And we can reduce this and just get an answer of 3. It's not worth it to waste our time in doing L'Hopital's rule, especially with the square root, when we can evaluate these much more simply. Never forget the rules you learned before. They are always applicable to what we are doing with these limits. Example 4. This one was the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive, 1 over ln of x minus 1 over x minus 1. This one is infinity minus infinity. To use L'Hopital's rule, we have to make a fraction. So we change this to the limit as x approaches 1. We'll have x minus 1 minus ln of x all over ln of x times x minus 1. So we can now take the derivative, both the numerator and the denominator. So this is the limit as x approaches 1. The derivative of x is 1. 1 is 0. And the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. The denominator needs a product rule. So we'll do ln of x times the derivative of x minus 1, which is 1, plus x minus 1 times the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x. Well, let's evaluate this. This becomes 1 minus 1, which is a 0. This becomes a 0 plus 1 minus 1, which is 0. So this is a 0 over 0, again, which is an indeterminate form, which means we can take the derivative a second time on this. So let's do that. So we have the limit as x approaches 1 from that positive end. I can probably clean this up a little bit before I do my derivative. I could make this x minus 1 in the numerator and this x ln of x plus x minus 1 in the denominator and just cancel out those x's. So this might be a little bit easier to do. So if we do that and then take the derivative as x approaches 1, this derivative in the numerator is a 1. The denominator is x times 1 over x plus ln of x, and then the derivative of x is 1. Now let's see what happens when we evaluate it. The numerator is a 1. The denominator is a 1 plus 0 plus a 1, and we get 1 half as our final answer for this. So we have to take our derivatives very carefully, and in this one, the best thing to do was to simplify it before we went on to take that final derivative. Example 5. This one is limit as x approaches 0 from the positive, sine x to the x. 
and this is a zero to the zero indeterminate type. This is done in a slightly different way. What we do is make a function, y equals sine x to the x. And then we take the natural log of both sides. So ln of y would equal x ln of sine x. Because when we take the natural log on the right-hand side, that exponent can come down in front. And now we want the limit as x approaches 0 of ln of sine x. And because we need a fraction, we'll put that x as 1 over x. And we'll take this derivative. So if we take the derivative of the numerator, we get limit as x approaches 0, 1 over sine x times the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. We take the derivative of the denominator, and we get negative 1 over x squared. Well, let's do some cleaning up. Limit as x approaches 0, we have negative x squared cosine x over sine x. And of course, we can change that to limit as x approaches 0 of x squared over tangent x, tan x. Just checking this out to see if we still have an indeterminate form, when we substitute a 0 in, we get 0 over the tangent of 0, which is 0. So we can go on and do this another time. Limit as x approaches 0 of the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, the derivative of tan x is secant squared x. And so we have negative 2x over secant squared x. When we put a 0 in here, we get a 0. We have a 0 over 1, which evaluates to 0. We are not done. Remember, we set y equal to this limit. So y is equal to 0. We set ln of y equal to 0. We need to take e to that power, e to that power. So we get y is equal to 1 as our final answer. So our limit is equal to 1. Let's go on and do example 6. This one says limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the x power. You should know that this one is e to the first power from all our definitions of e. But let's use L'Hopital's rule to show how this comes about. Again, when you're finding limits and somebody just asks you for a limit, you just want to give an answer. But if you have to go through the proof of why this is so, you would use L'Hopital's rule. Again, this is an exponential. Therefore, we will form the equation y is equal to 1 plus 1 over x to the x power. Take the ln of both sides, natural log, x times ln of 1 plus 1 over x. Make it into a limit, approaches infinity, and change this into a fraction, 1 over x. So now as we take the derivatives, we find that we have this equal to the limit as x approaches infinity. The derivative of ln of 1 plus 1 over x is 1 over 1 plus 1 over x times negative 1 over x squared. That's all over the derivative of 1 over x, which is negative 1 over x squared. The negative 1 over x squared can go out. So we are left with the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. As x approaches infinity, of course, 1 doesn't change. And this becomes 0, so you get 1 over 1, which is 1. Again, we're not finished. We know that ln of y is equal to 1. We raise to the e power, and we get as our final answer e. Example 7. We only have two more to do. This one states that the limit as x approaches 0 of x to the x. Again, we got 0 to the 0. So we will use the y is equal to x to the x, or ln of y is equal to x ln of x. Change it to a limit and a fraction x approaches 0 of ln of x over 1 over x, and start taking derivatives. So the derivative, as we put our limit in, 
of ln of x is 1 over x. The derivative of 1 over x squared is negative 1 over x squared. And that simplifies to the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x. And of course, if we substitute the 0 in, we get a 0. Again, this is of the exponential type. So we have ln of y is equal to 0, raise it, and we get the answer of 1. Example 8. This one has the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the 1 over x. Remember, this was the infinity to 0 type, another exponential. Done the same way, y is equal to x to the 1 over x. ln of y is equal to 1 over x ln of x. It's already in a fraction, so we just do the limit as x approaches infinity of ln of x over x. And some of you might know on growth rates that ln grows more slowly than x, and this will evaluate to 0. But let's just see how it works with L'Hopital's rule. This becomes limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x over 1. As x approaches infinity, this becomes 0. And again, I mentioned the growth rates on these because you can use anything in your bank of knowledge to find these limits as long as it's good mathematics. So then we have, continuing with L'Hopital's rule, ln of y is equal to 0. Use our e power, and we get the answer of 1. You have been exposed to all different types of indeterminate form. Hope you can use them in evaluating your limits in your homework. This concludes the lesson on limits.